Hello and welcome to Miss Ma's Grade 11 Functions class. This is 5.6, the sine law. We're also going to be talking about the ambiguous case. So the sine law is sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C, or A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. So we'd use this version if we're looking for the angle, and we'd use this version if we're looking for the side. So let's get started with a question. In triangle HJK, angle J equals 75 degrees, HJ equals 8.3 degrees, and, or, sorry, 3 centimeters, and HK equals 10.4 centimeters. So we're just going to draw that triangle out, and you want to just try to make sure that it is not a right angle triangle, and you don't trick yourself into thinking it is. And also, just a reminder that when you label the sides, they're going to be the smaller, lowercase version of the same letters that are in the angle opposite. So H is this one, J is this one, and K is this one, because those are the opposite. And so we can just label, and you can see I've not done this to scale, which is fine. HJ is going to be little k, which is 8.3, and HK is this one, which is little j, so that's 10.4. So just drawing these out and labeling it is going to help us to figure out what the sine law is. Um, you can see that you need sine law since si the opposites are filled in. And uh, we want to find this little k here, or big k here. So we're going to use um, k in the top because it is the angle. So sine k over little k equals sine j over little j. We don't have to write the h. You just pick the ones that you want. We'll fill it in. So sine k is the one we're looking for over 8.3 equals sine j, which is 75 degrees, over... 10.4, and we'll just solve for that. So you move this 8.3 up and multiply, so sine k is equal to, using your calculator, 0 0.7709. Make sure you are in degrees, otherwise you'll get the wrong answer, which gives us angle k equals 50 degrees. Okay, and so that is what the question is asking us for, and that is what we have found. Usually we will find angles to the nearest degree. And just a reminder, you do need to make sure you write the formula in every time otherwise you will lose marks. Okay, so let's talk about the ambiguous case for a moment. Uh, so basically all that we're given is we're given an angle, A, we're given a length, B, and then we're also given the opposite length, A, and we're supposed to make a triangle out of these three elements, okay? So basically all we'd have to do is we'd attach A to little b, at this point, and then we would just want to swing this around until we could create a triangle by trying to hit this ray. And you can see that if the little a is too short, then no matter how much I swing it around, I cannot touch the bottom, so it's, it's too dinky and it won't go. So that's when the a is actually less than the height of a triangle, um, which you can see right here. If I have that a is equal to h, this height right here, then I can only make the one length. So if I try to swing it around, it's going to be too short on the other sides, but when I get to the right angle, it's just right. So that's when a is equal to h right there. And if I have h is less than a is less than b, so um, this a is long, then I can actually extend it. So if I started from here, then if I went up, I, can, I can't touch, but as I go around, as I swing it around, um, then you can see that oh, I have another point where I can touch it. So I actually get two triangles out of this one ray. So um, there are a few possibilities. First of all, we could get no triangle, we could get one triangle, and we could get th two triangles. And the way that we would test that is, well, the very traditional way is to say, okay, I know that h is equal to b sine a. And how do I know that? Well, if I look at sine a, if you look at this triangle, it's very apparent. Sine a is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. In this case, the opposite is h, and the uh, hypotenuse is b. So this is equal to sine a. And if I just rearrange this to isolate h, we get h is equal to b sine a. So we can use this to figure out whether or not we are equal to a. So we can find the h to find whether it's equal to a, whether a is greater, or if a is less than h. So, and that would tell us exactly how many triangles we get. However, when I do it, I usually don't test it. I usually just 
um, test all the angles, and then see if it works. And I'll show you that in a second. Actually, let me talk about it really briefly right now. The reason this whole thing works is actually because of cast. Um, if I find an angle that is an acute angle for sine, then I know that actually, if that's true, then there is a corresponding angle in the second quadrant that has the same related acute angle and that could also be a possibility. So we have to test both of these possibilities to see if it's right. And that's where we get this obtuse angle here. That's going to be in the second quadrant. This is the first quadrant angle, beta. So that's where we get it, and this would be 180 minus beta. Um, and just to make sure everyone's clear, I do get two triangles right here. I'm going to just trace out my triangles. I get this obtuse triangle right here like this, so I could um, these are just the possibilities for the two triangles. I get a small triangle like that, and then of course I've got this big triangle like this. So I have two possible triangles, okay? And so we're not sure which one it would be. Okay, so let's test out in a word problem. All right, Tuesday and Gwen are part of a scientific team studying thunderclouds. This is, this is Tuesday and this is Gwen. Um, the team is about to launch a weather balloon into an active part of a cloud. I'm not really good at drawing weather balloons. You go. Um, Tuesday's rope is eight seven point eight meters long. Sorry, that was a typo right there. I'm just going to use a line like this. So that's seven point eight meters long and makes an angle of thirty six degrees with the ground. And this is the ground. They're both on the ground. Gwen's rope is five point nine meters long. So how far to the nearest tenth of a meter is Tuesday from Gwen? So let's just label some of these things in our chart here. So Tuesdays are up to 7.8 meters. We can see that this is going to be a little g because it's across from the big g. Um, when to the balloon is 5.9 meters long and that's going to be little t because it's across from Tuesday. And then the angle Tuesday has from the balloon to the ground is 36 degrees. So we want to know what tg is or little b. Okay. So we could actually test out whether or not um, this height is the right length um, by using h equals um, g times sine t. Oops, my t got erased. Um, and we could test that out, and we actually would find that g, uh, g sine t is 4.5 meters, 4.6 meters, sorry. So that falls within the a... Um, greater than h but less than b range, which tells us we have two cases, two triangles. Um, but there's also another way that we could do it. I mean, you can see this is really quite quick. But the other way I would do it is I would just find the um, the length using sine law, or in this case, I guess I'm finding the angle. So sine g over g is equal to sine t over t. I can't find big B, which is what I want because um, you know, I don't have any opposites there. I can only use what I have. Um, so I'm going to just fill that in. Sine g over 7.8 is equal to sine 36 degrees over 5.9. And so we'll find that angle g is equal to 51 degrees. So <coughs> this is the first possibility for g. Using the cast law, or cast rule, we can also see that angle g could possibly equal 180 minus 51. If we test this out, which is this ends up being 129, if we test out angle B and we find that angle B is negative, then of course we know that that's not possible. But if it's positive 15 degrees, uh, then we know that we actually do get two triangles. So that's another way to figure out whether or not you have two triangles or not. Just try to find the second triangle. And if you can't, then you know, you can't. <laughs> so in, if we go with this first case first. Um, angle G is equal to 51, so angle B is equal to 180 minus 36 minus 51, which is, uh, sorry, 93 degrees. And then I'll use my sine law again, so um, now I'll put the little b on top, sine, little b over sine b is equal to little t over sine t. We're using the t's because those were given in the question, so if we messed up anywhere, at least we won't mess up big time. So we just fill in the values. Little t is 5.9 and big t is 36 degrees, and that gives us that little b is equal to 10.0 meters, approximately. If we use this 15 degrees, and we use the same 
the same thing, so b over sine b is equal to t over sine t. Then we actually find that little b is equal to 2.6 meters, and these are actually both possible. Okay, so we could have Gwen standing here, or it's even possible for Gwen to be standing really close to Tuesday, and they're both looking up at the balloon like that. Okay? So let's do our last question. Uh, Shane's campsite is due west from 15.6 meters from a lake and is also 36 meters from a scenic lookout. So I'm just going to draw a triangle in here and it doesn't have to be perfect. You just don't want to make it look like it's an isosceles triangle, which this one kind of does, because you'll trick yourself into thinking that life is easy when it might not be. So let's draw Shane is due west. So here's the lake and Shane is here. Actually, let's call it C, his campsite and it's 15.6 meters, he, so you can see that's due west. And he's also 36 meters from a scenic lookout, so let's call that S. And we know this is 36.0 right here. Um, and then the angle from the lake, the angle formed between the campsite and the lookout is 140 degrees. So from the lake, looking from the campsite to the scenic lookout is 140 degrees. Draw that in. And we'll label these little L. This will be a little s, and this will be a little c. And we want to know, if, if he starts hiking from his campsite to go to the lookout, what is the bearing? So remember that bearing starts from due north, and we are just measuring from due north in the counterclockwise direction. So we want to know what this angle right here is. So we're going to find this angle, and then we're going to add 90 degrees to it, and that will be our answer. So again, we're going to use the sine law. We'll first note that this is an obtuse angle, so we know we don't need to use the ambiguous case because we wouldn't be able to have two obtuse angles in one triangle. Um, so let's get this started right here. Um, so we're going to use sine L over little l equals sine S over little s. Um, since those are the things that are given. And we'll just fill it in. So sine of 140 degrees over 36.0 is equal to sine s over 15.6. And when we solve for angle s, we find that it's approximately 16 degrees. So using our um, some of the angles of the triangle, Angle C is equal to 180 minus 140 minus 16 degrees, which is 24 degrees. So if this is 24 and we're adding 90 to it, we know the bearing is equal to 90 plus 24, which gives us 114. So Shane should camp, should walk at a bearing of 114 degrees. And that's it. Okay, so today we just talked about the ambiguous case and the sign law. I hope you enjoyed it. Ask me any questions in class and I will see you soon.